Hello, here's part two of The Mockingbird, and I've chosen some gray felt that I'm going to use for the tail. Uh, it's, it's good to use uh, colored felt because, uh, you know, you get that little edge coming through when you add the colors, you know, the different colors. And so I would say, you know, experiment with your colors. You can get felt in many different colors. And I prefer the soft, real felt, not the one that kind of it's hard to bend and feels kind of plasticky. So this is a good one. So I've cut it out to the size that I think will be, you know, good for the mockingbird. And, uh, you know, I kind of want the tail fanned a little bit because he's going to be hanging over the edge of this uh, frame when I finally get him mounted. And uh, you're just going to knit it all in there and add uh, wool until, you know, it's uh, securely in there. So you just poke it in and you're going to do this side and the back side. And then I'm going to start, you know, once I get this done, I'll, I'll put the feet in and um, start doing the coloring. So the tail is in there and uh, adding some wool to the back of it because that, you know, that tail, those feathers hang over those uh, tail feathers, the, the back of the bird. And, you know, you shape as you go along. Keep perfecting the shape and uh, getting it to look like a natural position. And I want that head kind of cocked, so, you know, you got to move it while you're uh, forming it, because once you get it formed, it's, it's hard to change. Now, this is where I make the wings, and uh, I do those separately, so you're not... I mentioned this in a previous video. Do, do the wings, and then apply them to the bird. That seems to make better sense. The problem with that is, you know, are you making the wing too long? You know, but you can always, uh, you know, lay it on the bird and look at it and pull some off if it's too long or add some if it's too short. Another good thing to do is, you know, do your wings off the bird and color them and then apply them. You know, there's all kinds of ways to streamline the production of the bird. I'll hang the bird over the edge of my uh, foam block there so I can, you know, shape it and lay it flat. And then I have my uh, trusty piece of acetate you wrap around. This prevents you from you know, poking your fingers. You put that little piece right over your wing or whatever you want to have. You know, where you can condense it down kind of flat and follow the contour. And this way you, you, you protect your fingers. See how nice and straight that comes out. You know, and you can form it between there. That works really well. These birds take five to seven hours. And then once you get the form, you're also, you know, at your next sitting, you're gonna find things that, you know, need to be tweaked. You can't rush the wool in there. You want it to look neat. You want the, the shapes to be correct. So there really is no rushing it. Birds starting to come 
to a close. Uh, I don't think I did show you how to put the feet in this, but there are other videos that show you how to put the feet. I'm doing the other wing on the other side of the bird. Uh, I got some a few more orders. I got uh, Robin versus the Mole. I got two painted uh, buntings. And uh, I've been working on those. And then I was working on a uh, cedar uh, wax wing bird, which is a beautiful bird. And there's the wing, you're poking it from both sides. You know, because the wing's going to be up, you can see the back side of it, you know, when you're looking at it from all angles. So, check out my website, magnusandgordongallery.com. There are many examples of uh, needle felted birds and other creatures. And, of course, we're happy to uh, take your orders online and make whatever you might be able to think of or I had an order for a Sun Conure parrot and they sent me a picture of their Sun Conure and I needle felted it for them and put it in a frame and needless to say they were jumping up and down they were very happy get that wing line and we're almost ready for color. There you go. There's the mockingbird all finished. I mixed gray and brown. I did each of those wings and made them look like feathers. You gotta do the top of the bird and he's looking down at his feather which is suspended on a pin so it looks like it's floating within the frame of course it's science 2022 Gordon and his toe is curling over the edge there and he's looking down at his lost feather so you can see this bird from all sides. So it's not like doing a half a bird when it's up against the backboard. You have to do the entire bird. So it's, it takes twice as long <laughs> to do both sides than just uh, one side. And it's in a distressed white shadow box frame. We started making our own frames because uh, our framer uh, couldn't get the wood from Italy or something like that and uh, so we still got our own wood and then we paint it and glaze it distress it do the rabbit and everything signed on the back Magnus and Gordon gallery and see the wing on this side and his feet see the feet are you know needle felt in there. I have to hand paint those feet. And it's the mockingbird looking at his feather. And I'll show you some other examples of some artwork that I've done. It's the uh, chickadee and the thistle. Fan, fan tail goldfish bee and yellow flower and then another bee and a yellow flower you got a little cheetah and a petrified mouse a wren on a spool and then sparrows on a branch this is i just finished this one i love it 